The Black Mountains in western North Carolina are the highest mountains in the eastern United States. Other mountain subranges in the Appalachian Mountains aren't comparable to the Black Mountains, as six of the ten highest peaks in the eastern United States rise within its borders. The crest of the Black Mountains is only 15 miles long, but in that distance, 18 mountain peaks climb to at least 6,300 feet above sea level. The range takes its name from the dark appearance of the spruce fir forest on the upper slopes and the appearance of lighter deciduous trees at the lower elevation. Elevations. The Black Mountains are home to Mount Mitchell, the highest peak of the Appalachian Mountains and the highest peak east of the Mississippi. To find a higher mountain, you must travel 1,187 miles west to Lone Butte in the Raton Mesas of southeastern Colorado. Hey there, my name is Bill Marion and this is A Nose for Life. In this video, we're exploring the incredible Black Mountains. This video is a part of a series covering mountain subranges along the North Carolina section of the Blue Ridge Parkway between Boone and Asheville, North Carolina. The Black Mountains are located in Yancey County, one of the seven North Carolina counties designated as the High Country or the High South. This area is known for its natural scenic beauty. As always, I've left links in the description. And leave your questions, corrections, and comments in the comment section below. You're going to learn a lot about this amazing mountain range, and there is some great scenery in this video too, so be sure to watch till the very end. So go ahead, click that like button, and let's get started. The Cherokees called Mount Mitchell Adagol. Later, it came to be known as the Black Dome, and that stuck for over 150 years. It was renamed in honor of Reverend Elisha Mitchell, a Presbyterian minister, educator, and geologist. Way back in 1835, Reverend Mitchell used a crude barometer to prove that the Black Dome was the highest peak in the East. He was only a few feet off our current measurement using modern technology. Reverend Mitchell was a brilliant professor and his measurements were true, but some of his other opinions were simply wrong and by today's standards, somewhat disgusting. Reverend Mitchell was a man of his time and his opinions reflected the culture of his time. He certainly wasn't as enlightened as we are today concerning social issues. Reverend Mitchell died in the summer of 1857 doing what he loved, exploring these amazing mountains. Mitchell's remains were buried on the peak of the mountain, his memorial plaque barely noticed by the 400,000 people who visit the mountain every year. Half a century after Mitchell's death, America was experiencing one of the largest industrial booms in its history. Natural resources like timber had barely been touched in the South. At the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century, the forests of the Black Mountains were logged to fuel the engines of the industrial boom taking place in America's big cities in the Northeast. It didn't take long before the Black Mountains, including Mount Mitchell, were stripped bare of trees. Locals were outraged and there was a public outcry to bring Black Mountain forest back to life. Life. Mount Mitchell State Park was established in 1915, and it was a part of the effort to bring the forest back. It was North Carolina's first state park, and its creation was the foundation in bringing the Black Mountains back to life. It was a tremendous success. The trees came back with a vengeance. Until... No one would have believed that in the early years of the 20th century that the Black Mountains were being watched keenly and closely by a greedy consumer greater in numbers than man and practically immortal. I'll tell you all about the sapsuckers later in the video. Mount Mitchell State Park is awesome, and if you've watched my videos for a while, you know that I don't say that a lot about state parks. Mount Mitchell's Observation Tower, identical to the Observation Tower at Kleinman's Dome in Great Smoky Mountain National Park, well, they're both iconic. At Mount Mitchell State Park, there are easy trails to explore a Fraser fir forest, and you can also access challenging trails, trails for serious hikers that lead to adjacent wilderness areas. This elevated state park offers backpacking tent sites, picnic shelters, concessions, a gift shop, and there's a restaurant too, but as often as 
I visit Mount Mitchell, I've never seen the restaurant open. Anyway, other than Mount Mitchell State Park, much of the Black Mountains range is a part of Pisgah National Forest. Pisgah National Forest is comprised of over a half million acres. It was the first national forest east of the Mississippi, and it's known as the cradle of the National Forest Service because it was home to the first forestry school in the United States. In this national forest, you will find almost 400 mountain peaks, waterfalls, hiking, mountain biking, fishing, hunting, and well, there's a lot to do. If you're an outdoor enthusiast, I promise you will find something you enjoy. And if you love the Appalachian Mountains, there are numerous mountains in Pisgah National Forest that exceed 5,000 feet of elevation, earning it the nickname Land of the Mile High Peaks. And within its borders are 21 mountains over 6,000 feet in elevation. Pisgah National Forest and Mount Mitchell State Park, and even the Blue Ridge Parkway to some extent, help manage and protect the 226 square miles that comprises the Black Mountains. And there's private property in these mountains too. One of the most striking features of the Black Mountains is the spruce fir forest and the amazing deciduous forest at lower elevations. Now, if you think this is as breathtaking as I do, check this out. The forest of the Black Mountains can be divided into three zones based on elevation. The spruce fir forest, northern hardwoods, and the Appalachian hardwoods. In this video, I'm focusing primarily on the spruce fir forest. It's the highest and coldest forest type in the Appalachian range, thriving in elevations above 5,500 feet where the climate is too harsh to support the broad leaved hardwood forest that dominates the region's lower elevations. If you've watched any of the videos we've made in the highlands of West Virginia around the Spruce Knob Seneca Rocks National Recreation Area, you might remember me talking about how those forests have an alpine feel similar to those found in New England and Canada. Now, at a glance, you'd think the same about the Spruce Fir Forest of the Black Mountains, but that's not the case. The Spruce Fir Forest of the Black Mountains are more like a high elevation cloud forest, a subtropical evergreen forest characterized by frequent low-level cloud cover. Cloud forests are among the most biodiverse ecosystems in the world. Mount Mitchell and the Black Mountains create their own weather and affect the weather of the surrounding region. Weather in the Black Mountains is unpredictable. Weather can vary drastically from one mile to the next. Depending on the elevation, the Black Mountains experience mild short summers and long cold winters. Back in 1985, it got all the way down to negative 35 degrees Fahrenheit. The Black Mountains receive over 90 inches of snow per year. Naturally, Mount Mitchell leads the Black Mountains receiving about 104 inches per year. Now every Southerner who was alive in 1993 is lawfully obligated to mention the blizzard of 1993 when talking about winter weather. Well, in that same blizzard in 1993, in just 24 hours, the higher elevations of the Black Mountains received 36 inches of snow. If I'm doing the math right, that's three feet of snow in 24 hours. That was a record. Compared to Asheville, North Carolina, Mount Mitchell is always 10 to 30 degrees cooler. While making this video, there was more than a 30 degree difference between Asheville and Mount Mitchell. So when it comes to weather, Mount Mitchell is extreme for the South. Mount Mitchell's weather seems mild when compared to the Allegheny Highlands of West Virginia. Mountain plateaus around 4,000 feet in elevation in places like Dolly Sods, Seneca Rocks, or Spruce Knob. When it comes to elevation, the Alleghenies in West Virginia don't compare to the Black Mountains, but they're located on the Allegheny Front, and they get blasted by cold air masses from Canada. If you love winter weather and the mountains, this is where you want to go. And check out our West Virginia playlist to learn more. But for the South, all the mountain sub-ranges along the Blue Ridge Parkway offer some extreme weather Weather, especially the Black Mountains. So the breathtaking forest of the Black Mountains made a comeback. But long before Mount Mitchell State Park was even established, the balsam woolly adelgid, an unwelcome small sap-sucking insect, hitched a ride from Europe. And by 1929, this invasive insect worked its way all the way to the west coast of the U.S. And by the 1950s, the balsam woolly adelgid found its way to the southern Appalachian Mountains and began wreaking havoc on the fir trees. This tiny insect feeds on the mature forest of the upper ridges, causing them to die off in a short amount. 
amount of time. By the 1980s, Black Mountain ridges revealed thousands of dead trees. This epidemic continued through the 1990s, but over the past couple of decades, things seem to be getting a little better. The spruce fir forest of the Black Mountains are growing again. New growth is showing some resistance to the balsam woolly adelgid. And we might be close to breeding trees that are more equipped to deal with the adelgid. But the problem isn't going anywhere anytime soon. The latest research suggests that the Black Mountain forest might be forced to deal with cycles that kind of work like this. Some decades, the firs win, other decades the adelgid wins. I've left a lot of links in the description about this because national parks and national forests haven't done a great job explaining the situation. Signs are posted in national forests and national parks providing information about the adelgid, and the same sign mentions acid rain and air pollution. Then tourist websites copy and paste this information, and it causes a lot of confusion. Acid rain and air pollution is a serious issue. The balsam woolly adelgid is a serious issue, but one has very little to do with the other. The adelgid was destroyed forest all over the U.S. long before the acid rain crisis of the 1970s. There is a slim possibility that acid rain might be stunning the growth of red spruce, hemlocks, and other coniferous trees located across the southern Appalachian Mountains. But the evidence is weak, to say the least. Besides, we've made some major gains in reducing acid rain. Brook trout were almost lost forever in the southern Appalachian Mountains due to acid rain. But these days, brook trout have made a great comeback, right here in the Black Mountains of North Carolina. The balsam woolly adelgid is the enemy and the war continues. Stay focused people, stay focused. One of the most shocking things I've learned while doing research for this video is something that I mentioned earlier, that 400,000 people visit Mount Mitchell State Park every year. Let's put that in perspective. 15.7 million people take a drive on the Blue Ridge Parkway annually, and Mount Mitchell, Prize of the Black Mountains, the tallest peak east of the Mississippi, and only 400,000 people visit? It's literally right off the Blue Ridge Parkway. It might be because this section of the Blue Ridge Parkway, the only way to get to Mount Mitchell State Park, is closed a few months out of the year due to weather, and obviously that's going to decrease visitors to Mount Mitchell. But that number still seems low. All I know to say is that people are missing out by not visiting Mount Mitchell State Park in the Black Mountains. I mean, a lot of people visit this region every year for a vacation. For example, if you're vacationing in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, take a day trip to see the highest peaks of the Appalachian Mountains. This excursion is about two and a half hours from Gatlinburg, and it's certainly worth your time. If you're planning on visiting the Biltmore in Asheville in the summer, there's simply no excuse not to add a one-hour excursion to see the crown jewel of the Appalachian Mountains. As I've mentioned in other videos in this series, our favorite stretch of the Blue Ridge Parkway is to begin in Boone, North Carolina, and drive all the way to Cherokee, North Carolina. And that's what this series is all about. In our opinion, this section of the Blue Ridge Parkway is the best. Depending on when you're watching this video, we're either making other videos in this series about the sub-mountain ranges on the Blue Ridge Parkway in North Carolina, or we've finished. Either way, in the top right corner of your screen is the video playlist for this series. When it's all said and done, I'm sure there'll be about five videos altogether. Now, if you're you're not already subscribed, I'd really appreciate it if you joined our growing community by subscribing to our channel and clicking the bell for notifications. We try to respond to all comments, so leave your comments and questions in the comment section below. Here are some other videos I know you'll enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Bill Marion, and this is A Nose for Life.